Hello, we're going to go through some quite tricky stuff for this video, and it's about using concentrations of solutions for the high, higher tier for GCSE chemistry or GCSE trilogy. Now, we visited the idea of concentrations of solutions before. We talked about them being measured in one way, in grams per decimeters cubed. So, for example, if you had 25 grams of a substance in one decimeters cubed of water, we could describe that as a solution of concentration 25 grams per decimeters cubed. We can also describe concentration in another way, and that is in moles per decimeter cubed. And once we know moles per decimeter cubed, we could actually also do uh, calculations involving mass. We could calculate masses as well if we know moles per decimeters cubed. Now, just as a reminder, we've done this before, but just to remind ourselves, the mass of one mole of a substance is its, its formula mass in grams. The mass of one mole of a substance is its formula mass in grams. So if we had one mole of carbon dioxide, what would be its mass? Well, we need to work out its relative formula mass and the atomic mass for carbon is 12 from our periodic table and that of oxygen is 16, but we've got two oxygens, so it's two 16s. Add those up, do the calculation and we have a relative formula mass of 44, but we know the mass is going to be the relative formula mass in grams, so it's 44 grams. So one mole of carbon dioxide would have a mass of 44 grams, and we can use that to work out grams from solutions. So here we have a fairly straightforward question. We've got potassium sulfate, and we're trying to work out how many grams in a solution of one mole per decimeter cubed, and we're going to assume that we have actually a total of one decimeter cubed with us. So how do we do that? Well, we need to work out the formula mass for potassium sulfate, and we've done a lot of practice of that, so let's not do that now. I'll work that out for you, and that's 174. So we know one mole has a mass of the formula mass in grams, and the formula mass is 174 for potassium sulfate. So in that one decimeter cube solution, we have 174 grams of potassium sulfate. Let's look at a second example. So we have how many grams? Of potassium sulfate in a two moles per decimeter cubed solution and we're going to assume we have one decimeter cubed of that solution so well if we know that one mole has 174 grams well a two molar solution must have two times 174 grams which is 348 grams so that's quite straightforward for the next one we want to know how many grams but this time we don't have a decimeter cubed we have 25 centimeters cubed of a two moles per decimeter cubed solution. Now we must remember that from our previous answer, a one decimeter cubed of a two molar solution has 348 grams. And we must also remember that one decimeter cubed is the same as 1000 centimeters cubed. And that's gonna make it easier for us to do the calculation. So those two values are the same. So what we do is we say, well, we want 25 out of our thousand, 25 centimeters cubed out of our thousand, and multiply that by 348, and that gives us our answer, which is 8.7 grams. There's one other way we can do this as well. We can work out how many centimeters cubed, sorry, how many grams in one centimeters cubed. So we could take our 348 grams, divide it by a thousand to work out how much in one centimeters cubed, and then multiply that by our 25 centimeters cubed, and we would get the same answer. So it's two methods of working out the same thing. You can choose which one makes most sense to you mathematically or choose the method that you like best. So there we go, we've worked out some grams from the concentrations of solutions. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna work out concentrations of unknown solutions when two solutions or two chemicals in solution react. So we're gonna calculate unknown concentrations. This is usually done or usually linked with titration, something called titrations. And if you're doing chemistry, you're gonna be working with titrations. But if you're doing a trilogy or the combined science course only, we won't mention titrations so much, but we do need to know how to do these calculations. So let's take a look at our first example for working out an unknown concentration. We've got hydrochloric acid, and that's reacting with sodium hydroxide. So those two react together. And we've been given some information about concentrations and some information about volumes. So the concentration for the hydrochloric acid is given there as a 0.11 moles per decimeter cube. The volume is given as 23.8. And for our sodium hydroxide, we have an unknown 
concentration and we have a volume of 25 centimeters cubed. Now, before we can work this out, there's a couple of things we need to know in advance to help us work out the answer. And the first one is this equation here. We've come across this before, but let's just remind ourselves. It's moles or number of moles is concentration times the volume. And we need to work out number of moles of each of those substances before we can work out the answer. We also need to know that to convert centimeters to decimeters cubed, we divide by a thousand. So we're going to convert those two into decimeters cubed when we do our calculation. We also, by the way, need a balance formula equation, which we have there. Now, it's very important that we lay this out neatly and in a logical way so that we can uh, clearly work out our answer. So we've got our hydrochloric acid, and our sodium hydroxide, and we're going to work out the moles of each. And the moles in our equation is given by concentration times volume for hydrochloric acid, and the same again for our sodium hydroxide. So that's our first line. Moles is concentration times volume for each. The next thing we do is we put in the numbers that are given to us in the question. So we can look at the question and we can see that for hydrochloric acid, for hydrochloric acid, we have a concentration of 0.11 moles per decimeters cubed and a volume of 23.8 centimeters cubed. So concentration is 0.11. The volume, remember, we have to convert to decimeters cubed. And to convert to decimeters cubed, we divide by 1,000. So 23.8 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.0238. And that's in decimeters cubed. We can add our known values for the sodium hydroxide. So we don't know the concentration. We do know the volume, which is given as 25 centimeters cubed in the question. But we would need to convert that to decimeters cubed. So again, it's a question of dividing by 1,000. So that would be 25 divided by 1,000, which is 0 0.025. We don't know our concentration, and we don't know our moles yet. But we're going to see how we can work out the moles of sodium hydroxide. Now, the important thing to remember here is that in our equation, which is important for this, we have one mole of HCl combining with one mole of sodium hydroxide. It's a ratio of one to one. We didn't put our ones in the equation. We don't need to put the one in, but if there's no number there, it means one. So if we then work out our number of moles of HCl by just plugging those numbers in the calculator, we get 0 0.002618. We know one mole reacts of HCl reacts with one mole of NaOH. So that means we must have the same number of moles of NaOH. So that is 0 0.002618 equals an unknown concentration times 0 0.025. And again, we can rearrange this equation by dividing both sides by 0 0.025, which is the equivalent of moving the 0 0.025 over the other side for dividing. And then once we put those numbers in the calculator, we will get our concentration of sodium hydroxide as 0 0.10472. And that's our answer in moles per decimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. Now that's a little bit long, so we can actually round it off to a smaller number of decimal places. We take our Q from our question. In the question it's two decimal places that we're using for concentration, so we can just round that to 0 0.10 moles per decimeters cubed. And that's our final answer for the concentration of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so that was a question for just seeing how it all works. We could try one for ourselves. It's a slightly wordier question, but it's done in exactly the same way. What we must remember is that we have a balanced formula equation, and we've got to use those large numbers to help us answer the question. So we've got sodium hydroxide reacting with sulfuric acid, and we want to work out the concentration of sodium hydroxide in this solution. So again, we use moles is concentration times volume of the sodium hydroxide and we use moles is equal to concentration times volume of the sulfuric acid. So once we've done that, we can then plug in our numbers. And those are given in the question. So we've got 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. Let's just put in our labels here, in fact, so we know which ones we're talking about. So sodium hydroxide on the left and, hyd and sulfuric acid on the right. And we can plug in our numbers. So for our sodium hydroxide, the concentration we don't know, but the volume we do know, and that's 0 0.025 because we've converted to decimeters cubed by dividing by a thousand, remember. 
We don't know the moles yet, but we'll work that, work that out in a moment. And for our sulfuric acid, our H2SO4, we've got a concentration of 0 0.100 moles per decimeters cubed and a volume of 27.15. We convert that to decimeters cubed, gives us 0 0.02715. And if we put those into the calculator, those numbers into the calculator, we get 0 0.002715. That's the number of moles of sulfuric acid. Now, in our equation, we've got a 1 to 2 ratio of sulfuric acid to sodium hydroxide. So we need to multiply the 0 0.002715 times 2. And that will give us a number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So when you plug that into the calculator, that gives us 0 0.00543. And that would equal the concentration times the volume. We rearrange our equation. So 0 0.025 goes on the other side. That's dividing both sides by 0 0.025. Put that into the calculator, and that gives us a concentration of 0 0.217 moles per decimeter cubed. And in our question, we have the concentration to three decimal places. So for our answer, we'll keep it to three decimal places.